Welcome to the Talent Grow Show, where you can get actionable, results-oriented insight and advice on how to take your leadership, communication, and people skills to the next level and become the kind of leader people want to follow. And now, your host and leadership development strategist, Haleli Azulai. Hey there. Welcome back to the Talent Grow Show. This is episode 52, and I'm Haleli Azulai, your leadership development strategist. My guest this week is Jeffrey Hazlett. Jeffrey has a long list of achievements and titles and accolades like primetime television host, business podcast host, global business celebrity, public speaker, best-selling author, and chairman of C-Suite Network, home of the world's most trusted network of C-Suite leaders. He's been cited in a lot of publications like Forbes, Success, Mashable, Marketing Week, and chief executive. He's been a commentator on television networks. You might have seen him on Bloomberg, MSNBC, Fox Business, and his own network, C-Suite TV. And he has appeared as a guest celebrity judge on NBC's Celebrity Apprentice with President Donald Trump for three seasons. So Jeffrey has built a lot of businesses and he's talked to so many business owners and executives. So his advice is really pertinent and valuable. Check out all of the information he shares about why you need to empower employees to make their own decisions, even though that seems scary. In fact, he talks about what should seem scarier than that. We talk about why leaders need to sometimes be irrational. He shares two key leadership lessons from the many executives and celebrities that he's personally interviewed on his shows. And of course, at the end, We finalize with a specific action he suggests that you should take to ratchet up your own leadership effectiveness. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome back. This is Halali Azulai on the Talent Grow Show. And this week I have Jeffrey Hazlett on with us. He is a primetime television host of C-Suite with Jeffrey Hazlett and executive perspectives on C-Suite TV and a business podcast host of All Business with Jeffrey Hazlett on CBS On Demand Radio Network, Play It, and now also on the brand new C-Suite Radio Network of leading business podcasts of which my show is also a very proud member. And uh, Jeffrey is a well-traveled public speaker, the author of three best-selling business books, The Mirror Set, Running the Gauntlet, and Think Big, Act Bigger, The Rewards of Being Relentless. He is one of the most compelling figures in business today and a member of the CPAE Speaker Hall of Fame. I could probably tell you a lot more of his accolades, and I will put that in the show notes, but let's just get this started. Jeffrey, welcome. Welcome. Well, keep going. I, I just love listening to Do that. you. Well, you know what? You've earned it. So. Well, I have. You know what? I have earned it. So I don't mind saying that. But at the yeah. same time, it gets old. And, you know, someone says, hey, what's the biggest thing you, you've ever done? And of course, you know, here I am in the Hall of Fame, actually five Hall of Fames, five wow. businesses for different industries, because I kind of reinvent myself all the time. But but yet, you know, when they asked me a question, said, what's the biggest thing you've ever done? I said, I don't know. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> you know, and, and that's kind of how I look at it. Why, why it's nice to hear all that stuff. Yeah. There's a lot more going on, a lot more to get done. And that's the way I kind of focus on it. It's like once I do something like that or have become a Fortune 100 officer, bought and sold companies, done billions of dollars, blah, blah, blah. It's just like, eh, OK, next. Next. Yeah. And that's, I think that's what um, makes you unique and uh, compelling to people because I think everybody should and probably has the capacity to be as driven as that. But let's face it, both of us have probably met people who don't have that much ambition. Yeah. As yeah you. I, talk, I talked to somebody like that today. I want one of my team members who better get it, get his butt in gear. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right. You know, and, and it just, it just like, Hey dude, get this stuff done, you know? And I, you know, I go to bed every night hoping I'm hurry up and going to sleep so I can get going the next day, you know? Yeah. So I don't understand people who aren't like that. It's tougher. It's really tough for me yeah. not to understand why you don't have a passion for, I don't care whatever it is, you know, for me, it's work and my family. It's a, it's, it's the stuff I do outside. I mean, I got such a long list of the stuff I want to get done. I'm never going to get it done. So that's why I got to live a long time, you know, and yeah. I have a lot of money because I want to go do all this stuff. So yeah. you know, so that's kind of where I'm at. Well, I love it. I do share that. My favorite t-shirt says ambition, never leave home without it. You know, like, Oh, that's I, cool. Yeah. That's a lot better than my favorite t-shirt right now, which is a friend of mine sent it to me. It's called Jews for Bacon. 
So I uh, <laughs> so well, I I'm, I'm a member of that tribe. So good. <laughs> it, was, it was hilarious. I saw it. I said, well, I got to have one of those shirts because I'm a huge bacon fan and uh, I'm not Jewish, but what the heck? I'm, yeah. I'm for everybody being equal. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't get into that today, but I do want to get into some of what you've written about, you've spoken about, because I think that you have a lot of great insights to share with our audience. But before we get there, just describe your professional journey briefly for everyone, just so that they get a sense of where you started and how did you get to where you are today? Yeah, well, you know, I, you know, I grew up in a fairly, you know, non-affluent family. I mean, really, you know, I'd say we were lower middle class because, um, you know, grew up kind of in trailers and mobile home parks most of my life. My father was in the military, so we moved around all over the place. So I went to a small little Lutheran college in, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, met my wife and uh, started raising a family and, and then bu- started buying and selling businesses. You know, and I started working. My first job was uh, in campaigns, political campaigns, and I became an executive director for a, a nonprofit group. And then I was, you know, basically getting fired from that job because I got a run in with the board started my own PR company. And then from there, that led me to buying other companies and printing companies and and then buying and selling companies and then led me all the way up to a Fortune 100 executive. And then left that job seven years ago. I was the CMO of Eastman Kodak, one of the most iconic companies in the world. Mm -hmm. And then started again, started another business and now own a few more, serve on about 14 corporate boards and, you know, running what's called the C-suite network right now. And where I'm building the most trusted network of C-suite executives in the world, along with advisors, you know, to those executives. We have C-suite advisors. We have C-suite TV, which is our, our television network, which we're expanding like crazy on all smart TVs, Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire, and now in air, soon to be in airports. So by the time you listen to this podcast, we'll have announced that. Wow. And in hotel rooms. And then C-suite radio, which, uh, you, you know, you're a part of. And and I am now a, a big part of move. I'm moving my show, you know, from CBS exclusively to C Suite Network, a nice. radio network. So, you know, that's that's me. That's what I'm doing. And then uh, I write some books every so often and, and get out and give speeches every so often. And that's how we connected because we both are members of the National Speakers Association. And uh, of course, you're sort of one of the celebrities of that association. And you came and spoke to the chapter here in Los Angeles. And I happened to see, I mean, I'd heard of you before and I was able to meet you there. And then, you know, we kept in touch afterwards. And so that's how things happen. So I'm really fortunate to have uh, had the opportunity to meet you and experience your energy in person. Let me tell you, if you need a speaker, this guy's it because he is so energetic and so motivating. So well, that's, it's my it's my weight loss program. If you can just, <laughs> you know, if you can work up a good sweat during a speech, you know, that's my that's my exercise. And you then know, you get can- Get paid for it yeah. and then do that. That's that's like that's like being a personal trainer. That's awesome. And then you can have more bacon. So yeah. in your book, Think Big, Act Bigger, The Rewards of Being Relentless, you talk about empowering employees to make their own decisions. And so, of course, there's a little bit of a downside to that, which is what holds back many managers and leaders from doing that, right? There's a risk inherent in letting people make their own decisions. So talk to us about why do you recommend this and how can leaders maybe have the courage or, or what should they do to get over that fear? Well, you know, I, I, you, we say that there's a risk inherent in letting them make decisions. There's a bigger risk in, in not letting them make the decisions because you're going to hold back growth. You're going to hold back scale. You're going to hold back, you know, all kind of growth of the people, growth of your company. I mean, they, there's so many different levels of which to me is like, oh, my God, why wouldn't you let them make decisions? Mm-hmm. Let, let, let's go all the way to the extent that they make them wrong. Did anyone die? You know, that, really, seriously. You know, in, in business, yeah, it could be a big blunder. It could be huge. But you know what? That would be saying, you know, I hire really stupid people hmm. and then I empower them to make stupid decisions. Well, I don't think anybody does that. I think you, the people that are working for you, by and large, is your A-team or you hope to be your A-team or you, or you try them out for your A-team. That's the reason why you got them. Hmm. So, so let, you know, let me help you make more decisions. And, and by the way, I find this to be difficult. Don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, even myself, I'm, I'm constantly like well, the best person to do it is yourself, you know, typically, but the problem with doing that is nothing else. You're the bottleneck. It can only go as fast as you can. Hmm. 
And there's no way one person can do it all. So therefore, you have to have the ability to let your folks, the managers and the people that are working with you side by side in, to be empowered to make the decisions right or wrong, big or little, you know, fast or slow. And the more you can do that, the, the more you can get accomplished. So to me, I just look at it as an owner or a CEO or a CMO or a C-level executive or a leader and or, you know, even in mid-management, lower management, you know, anyone in a supervisor, why wouldn't you let your people make those decisions? Did anybody die? That's a great question. That kind of broadens the spectrum of a lot of things that you can empower people to do, right? Yeah. I mean, you just want to look at, okay, and, and by the way, let's set up that. So let's say you're that manager right now and you're thinking about, okay, how do I do this with my employees? So what you want to do is set what we call conditions of satisfaction. So you want to have a discussion with you. So, you know, I had a team coming in today talking about the databases. You know, we deal with massive databases. And of course, I'm real particular in how we treat people and the way in which we set these up and what the architecture is. And I'm trying to move five or six chess moves ahead of everybody. So, you, you know, setting up things to do it in the right way. And yet I'm slowing them down because they can't make decisions. So I finally said, nope, you're making these decisions. Here's my conditions of satisfaction. Here's what we want to look. So, you know, Years down the road, you know, we might sell the business, might do this, we might do it this way. So we have to keep in mind this and this. So now go make the decision based upon those parameters, those conditions of satisfaction. Are we clear? Yes. Okay, great. Then my condition of satisfaction is you will decide this by when. So we set up the time frame, how it's supposed to look. And then I ask them to come back to me and present to me how they're going to do it. And, and so I can look at it one last time to make sure they haven't missed anything. That's a great way of doing it, you mm -hmm. know? And, and so, so what are the conditions of satisfaction that you can help with that employee or those people that are working with you to lay out the groundwork of the things that you'd like them to get done or, you know, or, or do for you? And if you, if you can get to those mutual, what we call mutual conditions of satisfaction, because in everything we've got in life, there's a, there's a customer and a performer in everything we do, even in your personal relationships, you know, with your kids and everything else there's there's this you know mom and dad or or parent and, and dad or parent and mom or grandchild and grandma or whatever it might be and so even in those relationships you kind of have that you know customer performer kind of relationship where you trade those off from time to time so it's real important to know what are your conditions of satisfaction you know if if i get my wife mad at me all the time because i'm not performing at a certain level when i'm talking about that kind of performance <laughs> But I'm talking about, you know, being being present. Like when when we go out to dinner, condition of satisfaction is put your phone down. Yes. You know, right? Yes. That's that's good to know, right? And, and and so we want to be clear, but is it okay if I pick up my phone? Well, let's imagine I pick it up because I knew I got a big deal it's worth millions of dollars, right? Or it's a big deal and somebody called me because they want to invite me to go speak in, I don't know, I want to say Norway or something like that. Mm -hmm. place. And and I know she'd like to come with me. And if I say, if I accept this and, and but let's say I pick it up and she gets mad at me right away. Well, wait a second, sweetheart. Let's talk about this. You're going to cost me millions of dollars. You're going to cost me a trip to Norway. Now, if I tell her, is it okay in, in our condition of satisfaction to be able to pick up the phone for those kinds of things? She'd say, absolutely mm -hmm. do it. You know? So that's where you got to, you got to be good and clear and, and good communication. Makes sense. Clarity of expectations, conditions of satisfaction. It's, I like that phrase. And then set them up for success and then let them be. Yeah. Do it. Go, 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 go. Yeah. Great. <laughs> so you say that people sometimes call you pig headed and irrational and that you like it. So I, I want to oh, hear yeah. more about this because I like to, I like to think of myself as a rational person and I'm not sure why you would want to be called irrational. Yeah. Well, and it's not pig headed, not just because of bacon, you know? Yes. Well, yeah, we got that thing going. Yeah. Well, you know, I had this show, I have a show called the C-suite with Jeffrey Hazlett and, and on, on my first season on Bloomberg that I had the show, I did a show around life technologies, a biotech company that's about $4 billion. It was about to get purchased by Thermo Fisher for about 13 point some odd billion. Wow. And in there, I got the CEO as a friend of mine. I said, hey, would you let me come behind the scenes and talk to the team about what's going on behind the scenes as you make the sale? Because some of these people are going to be worried about their jobs, what they get to do. You know, some are going to work themselves out of a job when it sales. And I really like show people behind the scenes. Could I take people into the boardrooms and places where 99% of the people don't get to go? And so he let me in. And one of the scenes that we did is I was filming him speaking at a Harvard uh, MBA alumni group in San Diego and picking up what we call B-roll. Mm -hmm. And in, in his speech to this Harvard MBA group, 
uh, Greg Lucier, who was the CEO at the time, got up and and put up a slide says, you know, leaders must be irrational. I thought, what? <laughs> And so I wrote it down and I figured out, wow, when I get them on, get them on camera, I'm really going to drill them. And I wrote it down. I got the camera guys to shoot a shot of me writing it down, circling it, exclamation point, because I'm going to just grill them. And then he said, and I thought, you know, just like you said, you want to be rational. Yeah. And I, and I said, I said, you know, Greg, you're a, you're a, you're a CEO of a biotech company. I mean, if anything, I want you to be very logical when it comes to biotechnology, when you're a publicly traded company, you got to adhere to certain kind of logical, sane kind of principles of operation or, or, you know, and you're the CEO, geez, man, you got to be logical. And he said, then he said, look, we got to move people from A to B, but sometimes we have to tell them we're going to C and they think we're crazy. They think we're illogical. They think we're irrational. They think we're nuts. Mm. And the reason we have to do that is we have to push past B to get everybody there. And so that's being irrational. And that's so it's kind of like back when you're in high school or maybe you're in college and you played sports and you remember the coach after you got done, you know, with practice, you're exhausted. And he says, run another lap. Mm. And you think, oh, my God, I'm going to (laughs) die if I have to run this lap. And you know what? You didn't. And that's what it's like. That's what we're talking about. So, you know, so my team, I would say, hey, work harder. You know, we got to earn more. We got to cut more money out. We got to do more with less. We got to let's, you know, come up with all the different things that you hear, you know, when, you know, it's, it's cold in our office today and I'm in my office in South Dakota and it's below zero and, you know, it's cold and I just tell everybody work harder. (laughs) You know? <laughs> <laughs> you like your big whip. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you just work. But that's what I mean about being irrational. It just shows that, you know, it shows people, you know, it's like my one of my team members said, you know, when I got in the office this morning on sevens, she emailed me from Houston because she saw that I popped in the office because everybody has a monitor, uh, software that lets us know when we sit down. And it said, uh, she said, rise and shine. I said, hey, rise and shine. That's noon to me. Mm. You know? And it's that, you see what I'm saying about that yeah. being irrational, being pushing it, keep, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a fun kind of, it sets a mood and sets a, a tonality in terms of how we want to be. We're just going to keep pushing no matter how good it is, we're going to be better. Yeah. When, when we get it perfect, we're going to make it more perfect. Cool. I like that. That, that helps to explain it. So it's more like having, you know, innovation is, is always going beyond what people think is possible or what people accept as the limits, you know, going beyond limits. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Very nice. Well, you know, on your show, you have interviewed, well, on your shows, I should say, right? Like on your TV and in your radio, you've interviewed a lot of business celebrities, a lot of people. And I know that you also have been a guest judge on um, The Apprentice. I mean, you you talk to a lot of different people. Is there some kind of a, a theme that you've heard from your guests, from the people that you've interviewed, that you can convey to our listeners about leadership? I think the, the common, there's two common themes. The, the biggest common theme is always about people. So it's the biggest exciting point for them. It's also the biggest disappointment. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because they, they're excited when they watch team members do and be and, and live to their full potential and exceed everything that they possibly can. And then it's disappointing when you see people don't. Right. Yeah. And and don't take it take advantage of God given talents or abilities or or they're listening to those little voices in their heads telling them they can't do it. You know. By the way, I stopped inviting those voices to dinner a long time ago. Mm-hmm. You know. And and so that's that's one. So it's always about people, and people are the real differentiator in any business because we all got the same things, right? Same internet service, same vendors, same primarily you know core pieces to the business and so forth, you know, capital, whatever it is. But people is really the difference between uh, real success and real failure. And then the second piece that constantly drives that that I seem to have um, uh, uh, or seem to have noticed that where these folks are just exceptional at what they do, and you're talking about people that I've interviewed, like you know, four-star general Wesley Clark, Steve Forbes, Penn Gillette, Kevin Jonas, Pierce Morgan, you know, he's kind of a jerk, but, you know, <laughs> they, but, but yet, you know, very successful. I mean, w- you know, what I love about Pierce is just his, his total transparency to talk about anything, Yeah, you know, which is t- 
to me, refreshing, you know. And, and so, but what I see from them is their ability to focus and to get uniquely focused on the things that they're doing or how they do it and what needs to get done. And, you know, even a Penn Jillette, you know, who I, by the way, who I adore, absolutely adore. And, he, and by the way, he's looking great because he's lost like 100 pounds. Yeah. And, yeah, he's just unbelievable, you know. And But Penn, you know, Penn and I don't agree on religion, for instance. He doesn't believe he's an atheist. Mm-hmm. And and so he and I don't believe. And I'm a Lutheran, which is totally, you know, uh, just, you know, just in the opposite. But you know what? I really like Penn. I really love his conversations. I love to irritate him, you know, I'll, you know, in the middle of him saying something, I'll say, well, thank God for that. And then he just you know, sets them off, you know, but, but, but which I love conversations like that because you, you see what, a, what a performer he is and what, and what focus he has for his fans. It's amazing. You know, he, after every show, I go see Penn, you know, uh, quite often in, in Vegas and we have dinner and then I'll come after the show. He's out front greeting the stand, fans and will stay there as long as there is a fan there to see. Wow. You know, it's just amazing. So that's, I just love to see the focus. That's the other thing that you typically see. They're so uniquely focused on what they have to get done. And, you know, when, when you rise up in, in the ranks as a leader and you have more people vying for your attention and more things to take care of, I would say probably it becomes even harder to stay so narrowly focused. So what tricks can you share that you've, that you've heard from your guests or from yourself? Obviously, you, you have it as well, that can help our listeners develop their own ability to stay focused like that. Well, there's one, you have to make choices. Mm-hmm. It's not easy, but you got to make choices. You got to decide. You can't do it all. So like, like on a seesaw where you got one side up and one side down, so you got to decide, you know, it's never, it's hardly ever even, right? So when you, when you push on one side, it's got to give on the other. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's the, that's the first realization. You, you can't do all things, can't for all, you know, can't do all things for all people. Can't, won't be just, you know, there's a reason there's sayings like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Write them down and they're true. So don't try to prove that they're not, they're true. Just listen, you know, there's some great rules of business that you should apply rules in life that we have learned over life that that's one of those. Okay. That's, that's, that's that. The second is getting back to this conditions of satisfaction. What are the, you know, four or five or things that you are driving in the business that must get done? Now, look at your calendar every single day and apply your calendar to that. Do they apply to the four, five, or six things? Mm. Because if they don't, you're wasting your time. And that means, you know, I have the ability every day to go and look at my calendar every morning, which you, you know, you and I talked about before we got on, on, on air here, that I, I sometimes will make decisions, you know, on the fly. I got to move this, got to move that. That's no longer important. You know, that's the other end of the seesaw. Something just gave and that's what gave because I've got to drive towards those big things that I'm responsible. Now, these are mutual conditions of satisfaction. These are promises. So these are real critical promises. You know, I'm, I'm responsible for overall revenue of the company, driving the value of the company, making sure we have adequate capital for the company, making sure we got adequate uh, pool and making sure we're pro- you know, producing a, a, an unbelievable superior product. So now I have other people who each have in turn rolls up responsibilities to help me drive those things. So my job is to make sure that for the, you know, the number of people that report to me, I'm clearing the decks for them and I'm, I'm knocking out the red flags. Well, it's getting in the way of them doing their job because you know, that's where I get to the scale. Perfect. I love it. So we're getting to the point where we have to start wrapping up, but I oh. want to make sure that we first talk about what's new and exciting for you. I, I mean, you're always creating new things. So what's got your attention these days? You know, I'm, I'm really excited about what we're doing with C-Suite Radio. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we're, you know, we've got about today about 34 new podcasters. We're ramping up to 100. Uh, wow. Uh, you know, hundreds a number. Uh, once we get to a hundred, well, then I'll go to two hundred. You know, mm-hmm. so so that's kind of how I do things. So we get to the first one and see how fast that took. Well, how can we do it faster and bigger next time around, and how to do it better, and how can we get better quality people, and and so forth and so on, more listeners, and so C Suite Radio, C Suite TV. You know, we're adding. 
uh, 15 new shows right now, television shows. I was on the phone today with some major uh, TV people about creating some more shows that are going to go out because we're changing the way it's done. Wow. You know, broadcast TV ain't, ain't like it used to be and isn't going to be like it used to be. So it's a matter. It's a wild, wild west. And someone said, well, Jeff, you can't do it that way. Well, yeah, we can. And why? <laughs> well, because we can. So that's what we're going to do. So, you know, TV is going to be, you're going to see TV. We just took over all the airports where we're the, the premier business channel in the airports and hotels. You know, then we have it on Apple TV and Roku and Amazon Fire. And we just cut a deal to put it on every smart TV. But then we're going to take those same shows where you would see them on our channels. Well, why not put them on some other people's channels? Well, someone said, well, why would you do that? Well, why not? I just want people to see the stuff that we got. Yeah. So how do I get to it? So my, my, my view is wherever you're at, I want to be. And I want to be where business happens. And that's the slogan for C-Suite TV. Just like on the C-Suite radio, it's, it's turning up the volume on business. And, you know, that's what we're trying to do in, in business in any which way or shape or form. And then, you know, we got our book club and our bestsellers and, and building the C-Suite network. I, I'm just having fun doing that. I love building things and making them big. Yeah. Um, and because I can. That's awesome. I love your energy. Well, you know, my book's on your book club and my ra- my podcast is on your radio show. Yeah. So now I'm going to plug for my TV show. Future TV show will be on your TV network. What do you think? You, you have TV. I have a face for radio and podcast, but you... <laughs> 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 I've, I've actually had people say that it's amazing the people, that's I, natural I, oh, that's, they, they write to you these little <laughs> trolls these little dweebs that write to you and say you have a yeah. face for radio and then another one wrote to me and said my wife's a personal trainer would you like her number oh my uh, god yeah. well those people are just jealous of you yeah well i punched him in the face <laughs> Just send them some bacon. Yeah. So what's one specific action that listeners can take today, this week, that's going to ratchet up their effectiveness as a leader, according to you? What are your personal conditions of satisfaction? What is it that drives you? For me, it's about building wealth for me and my family and having a legacy so that my children and their children and their future children don't have it as hard as I had it and that they have a leg up because that's what it's about for me. Second, as I want to do things that are that I learn from, I am challenged. I love challenge. I love to find things, to fix things, to do things differently, just because the old becomes old to me. And then third, I want to do it with great gusto and fun. And if I can't, I don't want to do it. So those are my three. And that's what guides me. Why don't you find the ones that guide you? And by the way, they're probably going to change over time. Okay. Because of life stages or? Yeah, life stages or because I did, did that, you know, like some, like I'll give you an example. I'm going to make my first million. Well, okay. After you make your first million, is that what's next? Right. You know, so, so it's really about, you, you get smarter about not the intrinsic measure of things, but the intrinsic value of what they mean to you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, you know, how many millions do I need? Well, I know what that number is. And then beyond that, well, I want to do something different with it, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and so forth and so on. So I don't measure it like that. I measure it by building wealth. Right. So so what's that mean? Okay, well, let's now let's start defining that for what it means for me and my family. So we sit down and we have those discussions. And and so they understand that if, hey, dad's going to have to this is years ago, but if dad's going to have to go and spend three months in Japan, he's going to miss your games. He's going to miss these things. Is it worth it for us? Because here's what we're going to build. Now, you have a say in that. Oh, if you don't think that's that's wealth in terms of our time and our you know efforts and things that we have as a relationship, then great. Let's change these expectations. Dad won't do that. And here's what it means for you. You're not going to Harvard. <laughs> you're, not gonna, you're not going to get the new car. You're not going to do these things. So we have those discussions. And so that's where we start having a, a you know great, healthy debate that causes this tension, which gets you to a better place in your life. And for everyone, those decisions are going to be completely unique and different. I mean, it may be it is that you are okay with, you know, maybe having a more modest life, but being ever present for your kids. And that if the long, as long as you're clear on that, I think, then that's all you, you should do. Yeah. And to me, that could be that you can define that's your definition for wealth. Yeah. You know, so what? Yeah, exactly. Which is awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate that you took time from your very busy schedule, Jeffrey, to, to spend some time on the Talent Grow Show. Um, how can people stay in touch with you and learn more about all the amazing things you're doing? 
Well, you can you you can find me, but just by googling Hazlet H A Y Z L E T T. The first name is Jeffrey. You can find me at Hazlet.com. You can find us on C Suite Network, C Suite TV, C Suite Radio, C Suite Book Club. Just type in C Suite, and you can find us anywhere. Yeah. And then it's been an honor. So thank you for you know to be on the show and just to have a chance to visit with uh, you and your listeners. I appreciate you. And uh, you, yeah, you guys are going to have to, I'm going to link to everything in the show notes and you have to go check him out because he owns, I think, probably 50% of the internet. So you know, <laughs> he's out there. Just look. Well, uh, thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Fantastic. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Talent Grow Show and that you take action right away so that you can actually leverage the insights you got to improve your own leadership skills, right? Action is the only way that you're going to create change. Hop on over to our free private listener community group on Facebook. It's called Talent Growers Community. If you're not yet a member, just search it up on Facebook and ask to join. I'll approve you. And then on there... Tell us what's your key takeaway from this episode. Give us any updates and action if you already took some action and the results you saw and any questions that you have. This is a place where listeners can support each other and I can further support you. I would love to have you join us. Please come on over. You can also check out all the links and resources that we mentioned in this show on the podcast show notes page, which is at talentgrow.com forward slash podcast forward slash episode 52. That's another place where you could leave a comment in the comment section. So thank you for listening. I appreciate you. I'm Halelia Zulai, your leadership development strategist. And until the next time, make today great. Thanks for listening to the Talent Grow Show where we help you develop your talent to become the kind of leader that people want to follow. For more information, visit talentgrow.com.